It's that time again, everybody, and I think I'm safe in saying this. Thank God 2020 is almost over. Hey, everyone, Templar74 here with another video, and today's video is a special video. It is time for the annual hashtag AskTemplar74 end-of-year Q&A for 2020. And like I said in the beginning of this video, I think I'm safe in saying it. This video coming out is a relief because it's basically saying... Thank God this year is almost over. <laughs> I think that that's definitely everybody's feelings towards 2020. This year has been a crazy year. I think it's one that nobody will easily forget, but not in a good way. But we'll talk about that, I guess, and we'll talk about some other things soon enough. So at risk of further rambling, though, let's get on to the actual video. So the video today, the questioning that I got, and I got several questions here, which is awesome. Thank you guys for that. I love interacting with you guys in this format here, answering your questions. It's something that I like to do just to get more one-on-one -on -one with my subscribers. I feel that it kind of helps me connect with you guys a little bit just because, you know, from this side of the computer screen, all I see are the comments. You know, you don't really get to interact with people very often anymore. And I feel that this is a way to do that. So I'm really happy about that. Anyway, we did have several people ask questions here, which is great. Uh, I'm going to be going in no particular order here. I've just got the Q&A uh, announcement video pulled up here on my phone. And I'm just going to scroll through the questions as I'm seeing them. So there's really no format to this. So I hope that if you did ask questions, you stay tuned to the end of the video. Because, like I said, not going in any particular order. I'm just answering the questions how I see them. So with that said, everybody, let's get started with your questions. Okay, the first question I got is from IndyCar Gaming. And his question is, are you possibly a motorsports fan? If so, who is your favorite driver and what sport? Mine is Marco Andretti. And yes, I actually am a big motorsports fan. I love NASCAR. I love rally racing. I'm just a big motorsports fan in general. I like off-road truck racing. And so, yeah, it's one of my hobbies, if people haven't known that about me, is occasionally over the summer, me and my brother will go out and we'll We'll uh, do some rock crawling, we'll do some motorsports, we'll go out and do some drag racing, we'll do some various other things as we tinker in the garage with stuff. So that's a little known hobby of mine, just for people out there that are curious. So yes, I am a motorsports fan. I would have to say that my favorite driver, though, is from the sport of rally, and that would have to go to Tanner Faust. He's just, he's funny. And also, and I'm a bit of biased here, I liked Top Gear USA. I really did love that show. And I know people are going to throw hate at me because it was uh, one of those shows where, oh, the British version is better. Well, that may be true. But I like Top Gear USA. And that's where I really got introduced to rally racing was through watching Tanner and Rutt and Adam just in their escapades across the world and getting into rally uh, Tanner was always kind of one of my favorites just because I knew his personality from Top Gear. So it, it's just kind of one of those things where one thing snowballed into the other, and that's how he became one of my favorite racers. Uh, NASCAR, uh, I would have to say one of my favorite drivers is, and this is a tough one because I like a lot of NASCAR drivers. I would have to say, though, that my favorite would have to go to Kyle Petty. So, yeah, it's just one of those weird things where NASCAR and motorsports, it's just a weird subject with me, and it's one of my lesser-known hobbies that I really get into when I have a chance here. I'm always busy, but when I've got a chance, motorsports are a great hobby, and I find them a great relief for me, anyway, in my opinion. But anyway, IndyCar Gaming, I hope that answers your question, and thanks for leaving a comment here on this Q&A announcement. I hope that you continue to enjoy the content and have an awesome rest of your 2020 and into 2021. 
All right, next we have Christopher Herndon, and you start by saying, hope I'm doing well and staying safe, and then your questions are, first question is, what has been your favorite anime from 2020? Second is just, what are your thoughts on 2020 overall? I wish you guys could see the look that I just gave my camera as soon as I said that. But uh, yeah, so it's a question. We'll answer it nonetheless. Uh, yes, I am staying safe and I am doing well. And I hope you are doing the same, Chris, to start with. Okay, first question is, what has been my favorite anime of 2020? That's a hard one because although 2020 has been a crazy year, it's been kind of a good year for anime. I'm not going to lie. Um... Now, everybody knows that I follow Sword Art like a cult following. Um, I like Pokemon as well, and I like Yu-Gi-Oh! So those, I'm not going to discount them at all, because they're really not new, although the Alicization of War of the Underworld was new in 2020. Um, and so I'm not going to count that, just because my thoughts are already well known on that. Uh, some of my favorite animes from 2020, and there have been a couple of them, uh, the first one that i got to say that I really did enjoy is Rent a Girlfriend. That one was funny. I did enjoy watching that. Uh, recently, I have been watching A New Crusade or A New World. It's a new anime. I'm really liking this. Our Last Crusade or A New World. I, Sorry, I messed that title up a little bit. But it is a great anime nonetheless, and I really am enjoying that one. Uh, me and my girlfriend actually discovered that one together, and we have both genuinely been intrigued by this one and we've been watching it almost emphatically every chance we get every time a new episode comes up we always make it a point to spend like a half an hour watching the episode so yeah it's really nice to be able to bond over something like that and i would have to say the other one that i really liked out of 2020 is tokawanda over the moon for you that one is just so stinking cute and i really did like that one as well so yeah 2020 although it's been a crazy year has really, in retrospect, been a good year for anime. I know there have been a lot of anime delay productions because of Japan, and they've been really hit hard by the epidemic. But it's really been... The animes we've gotten out of them have been really, really good this year. I'm not going to lie. Uh, those are just three of my favorites. Uh, there are probably more that are still on my watch list that I haven't been able to watch yet, so I'm not going to count those. But out of those, those are probably the top ones for me of 2020 as of right now. And now for your second question, Chris, and that is just what are my thoughts on 2020 overall? And I had to take a second to take a deep breath about this because, um, as you guys know, my full-time gig is I'm a paramedic and I'm a police officer. So this year has really been a crazy year. I have been working crazy hours, crazy overtime. Um, I've been exposed to COVID multiple times. Uh, I actually tested positive for it back in February before it was a big thing here, and I thought it was just a flu-like thing, and it, it really was like a bad sinus infection. Uh, come to find out a little while later on in the year, I had a COVID test, and I tested negative for the virus, but positive for the antibodies, and they said the only way that could have happened was if I had already had it. And back in February, like I said, I was really sick and I was out for a couple of weeks. And they're basically saying you probably most likely had COVID back in February. Um, again, that was before it hit hard in the U.S., so there really was no way of knowing back then. But that's how the year started was COVID in February. Okay, great. Um, in September, I lost my only nephew to a car accident. Uh, he was riding his bicycle and got hit, so that was bad. Um, and then you've also got another thing that happened, and this happened just about a couple months ago. I actually did have a mini heart attack from all the stress that I had been through. Um, it wasn't anything serious. I wasn't laid up in the hospital for very long. Uh, it was basically they're giving me medication and sent me on my way. So, yeah, that said, this year has just been tough on me, uh, but there is one highlight. As I said before, me and my girlfriend, uh, Jess, we've been dating for a little while, and uh, we actually got some happy news a little while ago, and I think I alluded to this in a Pokemon review when I said I could relate. Um, we discovered that we're going to be having a little one here sometime in 2021. Uh, not going to get real deep into that, but yeah, so... That has really been the highlight of the year. As you guys have all known, I've been married and divorced already. Um, but, you know, the girlfriend I'm with now, she makes me really happy. And the fact that we're going to be parents is kind of, it, it kind of brought a 
a tear of joy in this crazy year here. So that that being said, this has just been one year that's not going to be forgettable. So yeah, anyway, with that, that's my thoughts on 2020 overall. Overall, not been a great year, but there have been some good points in the year as well. And Chris, I hope that answered your question. And I hope you continue to do well and stay safe in this year as well. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the com or the content. Okay, next up we have Keegan Taylor. And your question to me is, I wonder what a more shipping series you're going to make for 2021. Stay tuned to that. No spoilers here. I will say that I have been kicking around some ideas on what I could do on the channel in 2021. Um, and I've alluded to this to my patrons as well in their Patreon perks. Uh, that I have started shooting ideas around for what I'm going to do in 2021. I am going to do something in 2021. I'm not sure what that's going to be yet. Right now I'm just kind of taking a break and letting this year kind of just uh, slide by before I do anything else. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the plan right now. I am kicking around some ideas as I get them. So far I have not decided on what I'm actually going to produce. But there will be something in 2021. So, Keegan, I hope that answers your question. No spoilers. I don't even know what's coming out of my brain. But there is going to be something nonetheless. I just can't guarantee when that's going to be, when that's going to start, and what it's going to look like. But I hope you stay tuned and enjoy whatever I come up with. Because that's always ultimately the game. Is for me to make stuff that you guys all enjoy. And, Keegan, I hope that answers your question. Thanks for the question, and I hope you have a safe 2020 and an awesome 2021. Okay, next up we have John B., a.k.a. Smooth Chocolate. And your questions are number one. Out of the Pokemon that Ash currently has in Journeys, which one is your favorite and why? Uh, number two, you asked me, how do I feel about the rush speed duels of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s? Do you prefer the regular way of dueling or the rush duels? Something you may be into if we ever get the rush cards available in the English format. And three, you gotta ask it, do you feel Serena will ever make a return in the anime at all? And I'm not referring to just journeys. Okay, so the first one is out of the Pokemon that Ash currently has in journeys. Which one is your favorite and why? Okay, so this one is a tough one because Ash does have a few of them in here. And I know that Pokemon Journeys has essentially been fan service. Let's not beat around the bush. It's been fan service. Ash has been getting a lot of Pokemon that people have said throughout the series he should have had, but he's never had up to this point. Let's be honest, that's what's happening here. Uh, let's not beat around the bush. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That's how I feel about it. Um, but I would have to say, out of the Pokemon Ash currently has in Journeys, I would say the one that I'm most happy about him having is Lucario. And I'm not just saying that because Lucario is an overrated Pokemon, which it is, but the fact that I felt that Ash should have had a Lucario since Lucario movie back in the Advanced Generation. I felt that Ash should have had a Lucario from that point. And the fact that it took this long for that to happen was just, it was nuts to me. It took this long for it to happen, but I'm glad they looked at the continuity of it. And I feel that this was just, out of all of them, this was the Pokemon that was the most overdue. So this is the one I'm most happy about Ash having. And it's not just because that this is a long time coming and it's long overdue, which it is. The other reason I'm super happy about this and this pick is just because Lucario has kind of like this... Uh, brotherly bond with Cinderace, much like Ash does with Go, and you've got to love that dynamic. I love when Pokemon turns into like a family, when the traveling party turns into a family, and every time that happens, I always have a soft spot for it. So, I would have to say, out of all of Ash's Pokemon and Journeys, I feel that Lucario's is my favorite, and why? Just because it's long overdue, and not so much because it's an overrated Pokemon. Okay, next up I have to ask this. How do I feel about Rush Speed Duels in, of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s? Okay, so in Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s, they are Rush Duels. Uh, speed Duels came out during the Vrains era, and I have done Speed Dueling. I do love Speed Dueling. It's a fun way to play Yu-Gi-Oh! without basically turning it into an hours-long affair. Uh, I have several friends that I play Yu-Gi-Oh! with casually, and we've really been doing a lot of stuff online and through Skype this year because, you know, you can't really interact much because of the pandemic. But I feel that Rush Dueling is a way to get the fun of a Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel 
without dedicating half your day to it, if that makes any sense. Because let's be honest, a full Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, you're sitting there. A true Master Duel, if you're playing with somebody that knows what they're doing, you could potentially be sitting there for two, two and a half, three hours just because it's 8,000 life points. And if you're up against somebody that's really creative and really knows you and how you play, you could be there for hours. A speed duel, maybe an hour tops if you're really dragging it out with some stall cards, maybe an hour tops, which I really do enjoy that. You get the same experience, but in a shorter, dedicated amount of time. And right now, time is something that I really don't have a lot of. Um, and so Rush Dueling, I do like the concept, how it's portrayed in the anime. And I think that if it does happen that way, which it looks like it will, uh, if Rush Dueling ever does come stateside, I think it'll take off like a rocket. Because Rush Duel is essentially a way to get a new generation into Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's be honest, and I'm ashamed to admit it, I grew up with the original generation of Yu-Gi-Oh!, the original generation of Pokemon. That was 20 years ago. And I know that makes me feel old now. Um, I was like 10 when this stuff came stateside. So I'm almost 30. So the fact that this is going to bring in new generations into the game and bring in a new audience and new fan base is awesome. And I really do like that. And like I said in my previous question to Chris, um, the generation that originally grew up with Yu-Gi-Oh! in the original generation days are now having kids of their own. And I feel that rush dueling and speed dueling, and I know myself is included now, I feel that this is gonna be a way to bond with the next generation and get them into something that we've loved for 20 plus years now. And I feel that it's a great way to keep the franchise going. I am excited for it to come in. And like I said, I do like speed dueling. I think rush dueling will follow the same path here. It'll bring back a lot of nostalgia for me. It really will. And I feel like this is serving a great purpose here. So I'm really looking forward to when it does come stateside. And by all intensive purposes, right now it does look like that's going to happen. So super excited for that. Okay, and third question, and you said, because you got to ask it, do I feel Serena will return to the anime at all? And you're not just referring to Journeys. I actually do have to say, there for a little while I was losing hope that it was ever going to happen. But what was it? I think it was in October there was an interview that came out with Pokemon Journeys. And they said that like past characters were going were gonna to be returning and that was when the Karina bombshell dropped. And then we got the Darkest Days arc and they basically said there would be more return characters to follow. And so I really do think Journeys could potentially be the series where we could see this happen just because they are bringing back a lot of characters here, a lot of nostalgia. If they're bringing back secondary characters like Karina, I think it's safe to say that they're going to bring back more of the past companions. I don't know when, but the series is still young. We're just 50 episodes in. So I still think there's a lot of time and a lot of promise for something like that to happen. So, yeah, I do think it might happen. I think this will probably be the best bet. Although I will be honest, I was losing hope there for a little while. So, a.k.a. Smooth Chocolate or John B., I hope that answered your questions. Thank you so much for leaving the questions here. I really enjoyed answering them, and I hope you continue to stay safe in 2020 and have an awesome 2021. All right, next we have the Jasmine. And you start by wishing me a Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday and tell me that things are going about, or hope that things are going about as well as they can right now. Uh, they are going about as well as they can right now. And thank you, the Jasmine. Same to you. I wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Okay, your first three questions are, I saw someone ask for your favorite episode of the current Pokemon anime. Let me expand on that and ask for your top five episodes of Pocket Monsters 2019. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that one is a difficult one. Now, like I said, uh, my favorite episode would probably have to be the Cubone in the Snow episode, uh, episode 15. Um, that one being my favorite, I would probably argue that the next three would be taken up by the Sword and Shield Darkest Days arc because, you know, those episodes were friggin' awesome. And then I would say my fifth favorite, or, yeah, my fifth favorite, oh my gosh, that's a tough one. Um, I would say probably Inner Pikachu 
the very first one. Not because it played any significant part in this story as far as Ash and Go on their Pokemon journey, but this episode just kind of gave us more backstory on Pikachu. And in my opinion, it was just friggin' adorable. So I would have to say those would be my top five. The Cubone and the Snow episode would take the top one, but just barely. Uh, the Darkest Days arc one, two, and three would probably take up the next three slots. And then I would have to say that Inner Pikachu would round off the list on top five. Like I said, that's a tough one because there have been a lot of good episodes so far in this, in my opinion. And it really is difficult for me to just pick five that would be at the top tier of my list. Um, and then you ask me on the flip side of that coin, what are my three least favorite episodes? Okay, so le three least favorite episodes, and this is probably going to be pretty simple. Uh, the first one will probably be episode 11, uh, which is Koharyu and Yamper and sometimes Gengar 2. I like the Gengar episode. I just did not... I mean, it's weird. It's not my favorite episode by any stretch of the imagination. It was an okay episode. I really was not a big fan of that episode. I gotta be honest with you. Um, and then the next one would probably be Electrifying Jealousy, Yamper's Feelings. And then, as sad as it sounds, and I know that you guys are going to go, oh, wait a minute, there's a pattern here. Um, probably my next least favorite would have been the Fossil episode, Miracle Restoration, the Fossil Pokemon. Like I said, and I know everybody's going to immediately notice the pattern here. For the most part, the only episodes that I find kind of really not on par are the Koharyu focused episodes. I think her episodes unfortunately end up getting the short end of the stick on these. Um, not for anything mean or anything, it's just one of those deals where it's okay, they're just my least favorite episodes and she's one of my least favorite characters. So it probably really isn't much of a surprise there. I know people are going to go, oh well you're you're picking on Koharyu. No, I'm not. It's just her episodes are subpar, in my opinion. But I'm rambling. Anyway, the Jasmine, those would probably be my three least favorite episodes. And then number three, you asked me if I had any time and any games of the Switch you've recently been playing outside of maybe Sword and Shield. Um, okay, so as I've alluded to several times in this video, this year I have literally had next to no free time. And what little free time I've had has been occupied with other things, so I haven't been able to play my Switch much. I would still say probably the one thing I've been playing is either Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist or Smash Brothers. Those are usually the two go-tos if I have time and, you know, I can dedicate some time to playing. Um, Mario Odyssey comes up every now and again, but other than that, there's really not been a whole lot I've been playing on my Switch. Not from lack of wanting to, but from having the lack of time. So much to do, so few hours in the day, you know what I mean. But anyway, the Jasmine, those answer your questions, or I hope they answer your questions anyway, and thank you very much for the questions and all your support on the channel. I appreciate it. And uh, best wishes to you, and hopefully you have a great 2021, and enjoy the rest of your 2020, and Merry Christmas. Okay, so next up we have Jet Hawk, and Jet Hawk, your question here, and this one was a really hard one. I actually had to record this question a couple different times because I was sitting here thinking, well, I liked this one, but I really like this one, but I like this one more. Uh, this one was a really hard one because there have been some really good episodes that come out of Journeys. When Journeys does good episodes, they really knock them out of the park. No pun intended. This was really a hard question to answer. But I think after everything said and done, I would have to give my favorite episode so far to episode 15, which is Snow Day, Where is Q-Bone's Bone? It was the Go-focused episode where we met Go's family. We learned a little bit more about Go and his backstory. And we saw them trying to help this little Q-Bone out here. And of course, Q-Bone being a heartbreaking story within Pokemon, the whole saga, you know, it's just one of those things. The ghost of the Haunted Tower was the orphan Q-Bone's mother, you know. So this episode just kind of pulled on the heartstrings a little bit. Like I said, there have been a lot of episodes that I liked. But at the end of the day, I think this one takes it just because of everything overall. Like I said, there have been some great episodes, and when they're put into an arc, they get even better. But I think this one was probably the best standalone episode, if that makes any sense, to where it didn't really 
add into anything special, but it was still a great episode for what it was as a singular episode. And I think that's important to get those every now and again. So Jet Hawk, to answer your question, being honest here, I think it would have to go to episode 15, the Snow Day episode with Q-Bone's Bone. So yeah, Jet Hawk, I hope that answers your question. And like everybody else, I hope that you have a amazing 2021 and hope you enjoy what's left of 2020. Hope you all continue to stay safe. And yeah, thanks for commenting. And I look forward to comments in the future. Okay, next up we have Minor Mole, and your question starts off by saying that you're impressed that I made it this far. I think I first watched you when your sub count was in the lower triple digits, but anyway, for the questions. Okay, so before I get into the questions, I want to say thank you for that. It's been amazing to me just how many subscribers I've gotten on this journey, and all of you guys, I truly do count all of you guys as family. I really do enjoy interacting with all of you. I really do enjoy making stuff for you, so the fact that some of you have stuck around this long since the very beginning kind of pulls at the heartstring a little bit so anyway on to your questions first up you ask me do i still watch any of the same poketubers from the past i don't really watch and we're not going to go into that um so okay do i watch any of the same poketubers from the past i would have to say really the only two that i still follow openly and I really can't say this because there's actually four of them that I still watch. Just two of them don't really upload much anymore, um, at least in the way of Pokemon content and on YouTube. Um, so I would say that I still follow Birdkeeper Toby and Loxton a lot. Um, I do watch their videos quite a bit. Um, I also follow Tyrone the God 3 um, every time he does a Pokemon video, it's always a fun time. Uh, and I also do watch Chornik every once in a while when he does upload a Pokemon video. He doesn't do it often very much anymore. Um, but yeah, I still watch him. I still consider him a friend. We talk on Twitter a lot as well as we do with Tyrone. Uh, yeah, those guys are really the only four that I still follow from the original saga. Not because, you know, the Pokemon content has gotten bad or there's been a lot of trashing. I have no hard feelings towards Ranger Boy or Enendy Maze. I still like them. They're still awesome guys. But it's just a lot of the Poketubers that were when I first started just really aren't doing Pokemon content anymore. And I think this goes to show just how much the fandom can change. Because when I started, there were like literally dozens and dozens and dozens of Poketubers. You could literally take your pick and it basically be like the same content all the way around. Uh, some of them went downhill and got like, I hate to say this because I hate to talk bad about anybody, but some of them really got their own head in their own asses, stuck really far up their own asses. Uh, there were some of them that just were doing great and then they kind of fizzled out because of life. Can't really blame them there. And then you've got some that are still great Poketubers. They just don't upload much anymore. But yeah, out of the Poketubers that I followed when I first started, I would say Chornik, Tyrone, Loxton, and Birdkeeper Toby are really the only ones that I still follow and follow frequently, if that makes any sense. Okay, and next up you say, asked me, did I start watching any new Poketubers or Pokemon Centered? Um, I can't say that I have. Um, you told, you gave me a couple of recommendations here. I have not checked out their channels at all. Like I said, things have really been crazy this past year and I've been super busy, so I haven't had a whole lot of free time, but I have not really picked up on any new Poketubers. Not to say that there aren't some good ones out there. I just haven't been able to follow them with any frequency. So yeah, really, I can say to your second question, no. In this year, I really haven't been following any new Poketubers. Okay, and next up, you ask me, with how bad 2020 has been with the entire world for obvious reasons, what can you say has been the best part of your year in your experience? Um, so, okay, so like I said in Chris's question, I think, obviously, the highlight of my year was finding out that I was going to be a parent. Uh, that was something that really hit home with me, and I was super happy about that. I think that was the best thing of this year. I think as far as anime, because there have been some great things in anime as well, I think War of the Underworld, ser uh, the second half of the final series, was great too. And that's really what I enjoyed on the anime front, but I think above everything, 
the fact that I found out that I was going to be a dad was really the highlight of the year, and I think that that's probably what I'm going to remember most about this year, other than working crazy hours and being away from home for far too long. And I hope things really smooth out here now that we got a vaccine going and so that I can spend more time at home because I feel like that's what I'm going to be doing for the majority of 2021. But yeah, so anyway, Minor Mole, I hope those answer your questions. And yeah, thanks for liking and subscribing and thanks for sticking around and tolerating me for the entirety of this year. It's been a really wild year and just thank you so much for following, liking, and subscribing. I hope you have a great rest of your 2020 and I hope you continue to stay safe and I hope you have an awesome 2021. Okay, next up we have Grenade Man 1. And Grenade Man, I gotta say it, every time I see this name on my comment section, I love that name. You get, you get brownie points just for the name you chose. I really do enjoy it. But uh, anyway, on to your questions. You ask me, what is my opinion on the current anime arc compared to the rest of the past arcs, if not the last several recent ones? Okay, um, so anime arc. I am not sure which anime you're referring to here. I'm going to assume that you're referring to uh, Pokemon. Um, the Darkest Days was great. Um, like I said, the final series of Alicization was great if you're referring to Sword Art. There's just so many open-ended things here. Um, I feel like some of these last arcs have been really good. Um, I did enjoy the Neo arc from Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s. That was great, too. I think all these past arcs that have just now recently wrapped up for this year were great, and I really did enjoy them all. So, like I said, 2020, although it's been a crap year, it's been a good year for anime. And next up, you ask me, what is your favorite Pocket Monsters movie? And I still say it, and I stay it to this day. I think probably it would have to go to either Arceus, The Jewel of Life, or it would have to go to the Mew and Lucario movie back in Advanced Generation. I think those are the two that will always stick out and be special to me, in my opinion. Those are two of my favorites, and I will always drop everything and watch those if I ever see them on, just saying. And then your third question is, have I seen Twilight Wings? I believe that's what the current spinoff is named. And yes, I have seen all of them. I really do enjoy them. And I said this when we got the Pokemon uh, 20th anniversary where we got the Chronicles and that. I really want more things like this for adult-focused Pokemon fans. Because let's be honest, Pokemon fans range the gamut. The oldest Pokemon fans out there are in their 30s now. 30s, maybe even pushing 40. And we're still diehard fans. There are some of us that have been following this since we were little, and it's kind of like a cult following now. So, yeah, I like Twilight Wings. I think it was kind of, for this series, what uh, Chronicles and that was for. And, yeah, I feel like that this is like the older version of Pokemon for this generation, which I really do enjoy it when Pokemon does that. More stuff like that, please. And Grenade Man, I hope those answer your questions. Like I said, I'm sorry for the first one. I really didn't understand which anime you were talking about here, but I hope I answered it as best as I could anyway. Um, and yeah, I hope that you have a great rest of your 2020 and an awesome 2021. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing, and I hope to make more great content for you as the year goes on. All right, next up we have Jessica Friedman. And Jessica, you asked me, do you feel it's time for Ash's journey to end and why they have stopped dubbing Yu-Gi-Oh? And why did the Pokemon leave, at, or Pokemon anime rather, leave Disney XD for Netflix? Okay, so a really well-rounded question, Jessica, I'll be honest. Okay, so first up, do I feel it's time for Ash's journey to end? Um, and I've said this repeatedly and I still stand by this every time that I make this comment. Do I feel that Ash's journey is time to be concluded? Yes. Do I feel that it could be done? I don't know if it can. Um, if there's the side of me that really would like to see Ash's journey be done, him bow out, get a new protagonist. Um, but at this point, with how far the Pokemon series has come and just how much emphasis they put around Ash... I don't really think it's possible anymore. I think that it's beyond the point of return to the point where Ash could be written and phased out. Um, not to say that it couldn't be done. I just think that 
there was a time to do it, and I think we're well past that point now. And I think that Pokemon has just kind of said, okay, this is what we know, this is what we're sticking with. And yeah, I really do think that that is going to be how it goes. Do I feel deep in my heart that it is time? Yes. Do I think it's going to happen? Probably not. I think the time that it could have happened has already passed us by, and I don't think it's as easy to write them out of the show anymore as people would think. Could it be done? Yeah. Do I think it's got a possibility of happening? Honestly, no. But yeah, those are my thoughts on that. Okay, and next up you asked me why did they stop dubbing Yu-Gi-Oh! Okay, so they stopped du dubbing Yu-Gi-Oh! for a brief time. Uh, they did it during Vrains, and I know people have been asking about this. Well, where is the Vrains dub? Well, you can find it on streaming sites. Um, some of them aren't exactly uh, on the up and up, so people don't want to frequent them because it's basically pirating, which I get that. I respect that. Um, they haven't really stopped dubbing Yu-Gi-Oh! They just stopped doing it in the States. And really the reason for that is Yu-Gi-Oh! was dubbed by the Four Kids Corporation. And of course that corporation went belly up. And when they went belly up, they lost a lot of partnerships in the States. Uh, Four Kids was really intertwined with WB there for a while and that's why the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime would always debut on WB and then it would be picked up by say Cartoon Network or some of the other cartoon sites after that. Um, when 4Kids animation went belly up it lost a lot of those partnerships and eventually 4Kids was resettled, rebranded, came out with a new company but it lost all those strategic partnerships that it had with WB and basically it lost all of the partnerships it had stateside while the company was, and I'm just saying it right now, getting its shit together. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say it right now because this video is not monetized. They basically were taking too long to get their shit together, and now we're basically seeing the consequences of it. Now we know that Pluto TV has picked up Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains and has started dubbing again and releasing it in the States. Uh, some people don't have it. But it is promising that there are people that are dubbing it now and it is coming out stateside. The Brain series has already been dubbed, but there just hasn't been anybody to broadcast it in the States because, like I said, the Yu-Gi-Oh! dubbing company uh, for kids went belly up and it lost a lot of its strategic partnerships while it was waiting to get its shit together. Um, so, yeah, that's really why the dubbing of Yu-Gi-Oh! stopped in America and I really do feel, and this is going to lean into your third question, that the future of animation, whether it be cartoons, anime, whatever, does not lie in cable television anymore. I think that the future is within streaming services and streaming platforms because, let's be honest, why would I go out and pay, say, and I'm just using a local example, why would I go and pay $80 for a Comcast Infinity uh, subscription for cable when I can just get Hulu and Netflix and also Crunchyroll. I can get all three of those things, stream them on my smart TV and get the same shows that I always watch on cable and still pay less. And I really do think that that's where the future lies in television is with streaming. Um, and I do think that that leans into a little bit of your next question here. And so I think that dubbing a future series is going to be done mostly on the streaming platforms. And it's not really going to be up to cable anymore if you're asking for my honest and bold opinion on it. Okay, and this, like I said, this bleeds into your third question, Jessica. Why did the Pokemon anime leave Disney XD for Netflix? And there's a great channel that I have recently picked up called The Round Table. They basically go over like all of the cartoons and the history of cartoons and animation. And I'm going to echo what they say in a lot of their videos is money. The future of cartoons and animation and anime does not lay in cable networks anymore. It lays, at least in the States and in America, it lays in the streaming platforms. 
And I think that's why Pokemon made the jump to Netflix is just because more people are streaming now than ever before. And it's cheaper to stream than it is for cable subscriptions. And I think it's a way to reach a wider audience, if that makes any sense. It's all about the money. It, let's just be bold. And let's be honest. It's all about the money. It's all about the Benjamins. Uh, if you could, Like I said, if I have a cartoon and I could make, say, we're just going to use random examples here. Say I could make $50 and reach 5,000 people on cable. Okay. Or I could go to, say, Netflix or Hulu or whatever streaming platform you use, and I could reach arguably five times as many people and make five times as much off of the streaming subscriptions. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, let's just be honest. It's just coming down to money. And I think that that's why I say it now, and I agree with this full circle, that I think the future of animation and anime and all that is no longer on the cable networks. It's on the streaming platforms, Netflix and Hulu. And I think that when Disney basically let go of Pokemon, they basically just gave it to the streaming platforms. Disney has its own streaming platform with Disney XD, uh, but it also has strategic partnerships with other streaming platforms. And I don't really think it was Disney letting go of it because it's not profitable, because Pokemon is a juggernaut. Let's be honest, it's a juggernaut. Um, I think that basically they just did their strategic partnership thing because it'll make more money in the long run. And I really do feel that that is the reason why Pokemon has stopped on Disney XD and has gone over to streaming exclusively. And it's an unpopular opinion, but I think that in this day and age, cable TV is going the way of the dinosaur. And I know I'm aging myself. It's going the way of Sears. It's going the way of Kmart. It's going the way of all these other dinosaurs that we no longer hear about. And it's just, this is the future. It's basically, the streaming platforms are for what the cable industry was Amazon for the retail industry. It's just where things are going and where we're going to go from now on. And everybody's just trying to adapt, improvise, and overcome. And those are my thoughts, Jessica, on what your what your question was revolving around Pokemon. Like I said, your last two questions kind of bled into one another. But anyway, Jessica, I hope that answers your questions. And again, thank you for liking and subscribing. And yeah, I hope you continue to stay well and stay safe in 2020. Have a good rest of your 2020 and an awesome 2021. All right, and guys, that is it. Those were all the questions posted to the hashtag AskTemplar74 end of year Q&A for 2020. Like I said, I thank you guys always who comment because I feel that this is a great way to reach out to you guys. And I really do enjoy interacting with you guys this way. Uh, and I'm also just happy to say it, this video coming out means that 2020 is almost over, which is what I'm super happy about. This year has just been one of those years where I think basically everybody is just tired of hearing about it and is just willing to forget. It's been a crazy year, but I'm glad that it's almost behind us. And with that said, everybody, and like I said, I hope you guys continue to stay safe and have a good rest of your 2020 and an awesome 2021. Here's to a better 2021, everybody. Let, let's just raise a glass now and just say cheers to a better 2021. All right, let, let's just do that. Remember to value what's precious to you. Uh, make time for your family. Make time for your friends because you never know. Uh, this year has really opened up my eyes, and I'm really not taking anything for granted anymore. But that said, everybody, I hope you continue to do the, I hope you continue to do the same. Whoa. I'm sorry, guys. I'm getting tongue-tied. Anyway, I'm making this outro probably a bit longer than it needs to be. So with that, everybody, I hope I answered your questions. Thank you so much for participating in the Templar 74 end-of-year Q&A for 2020. And I do look forward to doing the mid-year Q&A for 2021 here in June. Uh, just one little channel update before I go. Uh, after I post this video and the Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s review for this week, I'm probably going to take the rest of 2020 off. I will probably post the Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s review as soon as the new year rolls around. I just want to take a couple of weeks to kind of recharge my batteries because I have been literally working myself to death. But uh, that said, everybody, I hope you continue to stay safe and have an awesome 2021. And yeah, 
We'll get through this. Thank you so much for the comments. Thank you so much for subscribing. And as always, everybody, I hope you have a great day. Templar74 signing off. Have a great day, everybody. And I'll talk to you all next time. Goodbye, everybody, and thank you again.